Hello and welcome. First, let me say sorry for the lack of videos recently. I had a little bit of health issues, so I am doing somewhat better now, so there should be a lot less weeks with no videos. I hope at least. So, on to the recipe for today. Today we're going to make crescent roll pizza. This is a super quick recipe and easy to make, so let's get started with the ingredients. For our pizza, we're going to need crescent rolls, of course. These are usually about eight per tube, so you'll probably need about one tube per four people, depending on how hungry they are. Pizza sauce and cheese for the most basic of pizza. In my case, I'm going to be adding a few ingredients. So for here, I'm going to be using quick pickled onions, pickled jalapenos, green olives, black olives, raw onion, crumbled bacon, and some pepperoni. Before we start on anything else, we want to make sure to move the oven rack from the middle to the top and start preheating the oven to 375 degrees. So, let's unpop this container and get them out for rolling. This type of dough will love to stick to itself, but if it's still a bit on the cold side, it won't stick to you, so that makes it easier to lay out. Now, the two ways I've seen this made is leaving them in the wedge shapes and just unroll them as I'm doing here. The second way was to lay them out in the pan and push them together so that they fill out a sheet pan for a sort of flatter square pizza. I like mine as a triangle because I feel like it kind of gives it that more traditional pizza feel. Also, it'll give us a few advantages when it comes to toppings. I did clean the dough up a little bit off camera and made sure the connecting pieces didn't stick out or anything like they would if I had left them there. This was just to clean up the appearances a bit and just make it look a little better. Oh yes, also an odd note for those who cannot have dairy. I found that oddly enough the butter flavored crescent rolls do not actually have any dairy in them. Do check yours to make sure if it's dairy free, but I've checked a few store brands and major brands and they've all been dairy free so far so but whereas the other ones that did not claim to have any dairy in them did so it is a little weird that the one that claims to be dairy flavored is the one with no dairy but hey at least they're out there so we need a bit of thought about the type of dough we're doing in the pizza saucing part since this dough is very light in texture we need to make sure we use a very light layer of pizza sauce the reason for this is the dough will have a much harder time rising if we put too much of the sauce on top of it in this case that means just a fairly thin layer because we want our crusts to be able to rise just a little bit once you have all the dough lightly covered we're good to go on our toppings i actually myself usually leave the uh, small bit of the crust end of the pizza free the larger side just to make it feel a little bit more like a pizza also i have found that generic pizza sauce is oddly better for this style of pizza because it doesn't tend to have any chunks of tomato and is fairly thin in consistency letting you put a light layer on really easily if you're enjoying this video make sure to subscribe for more like it and if you hit the notification bell youtube just might even inform you when the new videos are out sometimes now for toppings real quick one easy way to make your pizza of any kind to pop a little bit more is to sprinkle a little bit of italian seasoning on the sauce before you add the toppings this adds subtle pockets of flavor that make the taste experience just a little bit more complicated the reason i'm rubbing it in my palm of my hand is the oil in your skin will react with the dried spices to enhance the flavor you don't need skin oil for this obviously but since it takes such a tiny amount of oil it becomes the easiest and quickest way to do this. Garlic powder is also a pretty solid addition there if you wanted to have a little bit of a garlicky flavor throughout the whole pizza. Now, this is the best part of a pizza like this. Since the slices are already separate, everyone can customize their pizza to their own tastes and dietary restrictions. So in my case, I cannot have dairy, so no cheese and such. So for me, and anyone like me who can't have cheese, you'll probably at that point want to use some fairly good toppings since they're going to be the star of the show. Here I'm using some homemade quick pickled onions, some pickled jalapenos, raw onions, green olives, and black, ol and black olives for a vegetarian slice, a pepperoni and onion slice, a pepperoni, onion, and bacon slice, a pepperoni, black olives, and bacon slice. One quick note about the veggies, since it will look a bit overloaded, but the veggies will actually shrink quite a bit in the baking, so if you have about the same amount you see me using here, you know it's not going to be overloaded. And here we have our lovely stunt hands. She, unlike me, can have cheese, so for hers, everything is pretty much the same since she liked the topping ideas I had come up with. The only two major differences are the cheese and a tiny oops with the bacon that ended up on the veggie slice. So, as I said, the toppings were the best part, and part of that is because you can make each slice quite 
different, as you see here. And because of that, if you have kids or young adults, you can make it part of the experience by letting each person make their own slice. This can add to the fun of the meal, since they get to customize everything themselves. And if you have a person like me who can't have cheese, by being able to build my own flavors was always a nice touch when people would do things, and it makes it so that person doesn't feel left out, like it's an afterthought or anything. The only thing you have to do is make sure you don't overload it too much. More than about five or so toppings will overload pretty much any pizza no matter how good. Once you have all the toppings you want on it, you want to add your cheese. It will end up with a little bit of the outer edge light on the cheese. It doesn't quite cover like a real piece of pizza, but the reason we want to do that is because if you leave that little gap, it's going to make the dough rise a little bit more on the outside, and that'll add a little bit more stiffness to the structure of our slice, so it won't be sort of floppy and limp. Once that's done, we want to move it to our preheated oven and put the pizza on the top rack and reduce the temperature from 375 to 350 and cook for the lower end of the time listed on the crescent roll packaging. We preheated it to 375 to account for the temperature drop and we put it in the oven and by opening the oven so that the rolls will still be done at that lower end of the cooking time. We need this to be just done on the crust because once we hit the 11-ish minute mark, which is about the normal cook time on that, we want to change from bake to broil and change our temperature also to broil. This will let us get the browned and crispy cheese like you would get from a pizza place and it also helps brown the outer edges of the crust and it will also render some of the fat from the bacon and pepperoni in. You want to broil this for about two minutes or until you decide your cheese is sufficiently browned. Just in case you did not know, the broil setting uses the top heating element only in your oven, and the broil temperature is typically as high as that temp heating element will go. So this setting is perfect for quickly browning things and lets us get that crispy cheese without having to overcook the rest of the pizza and having our dough dried out. The bake setting we started with, by the way, only uses the top element for the preheating. Once it's done preheating, it generally only uses the bottom element. This is why we did everything on the top rack and switched from the indirect dish heat of the bottom element to the more intense heat of the broil setting. And with that, we've made some pretty nice party pizza. This is a great for birthdays and even just a super quick weekday meal. It's easy and all the main ingredients are super easy to store for long periods of time. So it also helps if you're trying to reduce the number of trips you make out of the house. It also happens to work great with cheaper ingredients, since you can easily layer a few things like the Italian seasoning, garlic powder, or nutritional yeast on there to give the less expensive ingredients a little bit of a flavor boost and make your pizza taste great. Those work in any pizza. So, as always, I hope you learned something and enjoyed yourself. And if you like this and haven't already subscribed, subscribe for more like this, and but with slightly less time between videos. And as always, have a great day and a great meal.